Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for watching today. Today we are going to be unboxing and giving a little movie review for the brand new uh, movie, Dune. Now Dune was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I was even looking forward to it. Last year we got a small teaser and then they pushed it back to 2021. And I've uh, been waiting all year and we finally have it. It just came out. I just saw it last night. So I'll give you my thoughts on the movie in a non-spoiler type of way. But of course, as we do here in the channel, we will be going through the Funko Pops that they have. I do have all of the Pops except for the one Chase that is in this set. And we'll go ahead and unbox them and get a closer look at these Pops and kind of talk about the characters a little bit. While we're at it too, uh, this might be a fun one. It might be a little bit of a longer video so strap in here. Uh, but definitely will be worth uh, to see these pops because they're definitely some really cool characters. So definitely make sure if you do enjoy our content here, go down below, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and leave a like in the video. It really does help us out. We very much appreciate it. So first off, I'll go ahead and just start with some quick thoughts on the movie Dune. I enjoyed the movie. I think it's done really well. Uh, director Denis Villeneuve brought this book to the screen. If you don't know, Dune is a very, very long sci-fi novel saga. And uh, it's been done before in a miniseries. It's been done before uh, by David Lynch in the 80s. But, you know, it wasn't really received too well with those. So it was very hard for a lot of people to think about how Dune would come to the screen. And I think it was done very well. And the thing about Dune is that it's such a big and new world. So it takes place about 9,000 years in the future. I think it was like the year 10,109 or something like that, they say. And there's all of these different worlds and all these different clans that kind of work together under the Emperor. Kind of like how in Star Wars, which Star Wars is a little bit influenced by the new novels, which came out about 15 years before the original Star Wars. So it has that little bit of influence. So you can kind of, um, you know, compare it to that where you have the Republic working under the Emperor, but then you have all these different planets with the Senate and everything. Kind of that, that, that world is kind of built in the beginning of the film. And one of those houses on one of those planets is House Atreides. And that's where we have our main character, Paul Atreides, where we see the Funko Pop right here, uh, which we'll go ahead and get a closer look at. But Paul, played by Timothy Chalamet, uh, pretty much goes through the story of him and his family in the battle, uh, you know, pretty much with helping him and his family. So very, very interesting story. There is a lot to it, though, uh, and it is a longer movie. I think it clocks in about two hours and 35 minutes, something like that. So make sure that before you go into the theater that you use the restroom beforehand uh, because this is something that is definitely going to test you uh, in your bladder. If you're one that does like to, that tends to fall asleep during movies, Make sure that, you know, you maybe have some coffee beforehand because there's going to be a lot to this movie. But overall, it is actually really good. The visuals are absolutely one of the best parts. The acting is re done really well, even by some people like, you know, Jason Momoa, who plays another character, Duncan Idaho, which we'll see in pop form here, uh, who's not necessarily the greatest thespian, but he actually comes out really, really well. He's actually one of the standouts in this movie, in my opinion. So definitely a good movie overall. There's definitely some problems that I have with it, which we will talk a little bit more about as we go throughout, because I do want to talk a little bit more about what these characters are. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and jump into that by talking about what we just, who just showed Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet, who is our main character in the movie. And with Paul right here, it looks like he has his uh, kind of his suit on, which they have um, it's kind of an infiltration a system for their suit. So one of the plans they go to is going to be Arrakis. And now Paul's family is in charge of now kind of looking over this planet. And that is definitely a desert planet that you cannot really last more than two hours out there without one of these suits. So when they go there, they are given these suits. And so there you kind of see that it's really incredible the detail that's put into the suit in the movie. And that is really translated over to the pop. And I think they captured it really well, kind of with the scarf and the cloth going over it. And then all the little details of all the little mechanisms throughout the suit as well. So the suit is supposed to keep uh, in your moisture so that way you don't lose moisture. It actually recycles the moisture from your sweat. 
new, remake that into water so that way you can survive out there and keeps your body cooler and does not allow the heat to actually get into your body, which is pretty cool. Paul does have a sword there, so at one part of the movie he does do a little battle with the suit on, so it's probably going from that. And he has that luscious Timothy Chalamet hair, which I'm always jealous about. And I really enjoyed Paul as a character in the portrayal by Timothy Chalamet. There's definitely a lot that goes into the character. He starts off a little bit more shy, a little bit more quiet, and as he goes throughout, he kind of learns a little bit more about who who he is and where he fits it in this world and what his destiny is. So I think it's a really great kind of partial coming of age story, like realizing your potential, your destiny in a way, uh, and also just kind of stepping up, taking that responsibility. And there's so many other small, you know, interesting things with the politics and really what he wants to do and these dreams that he's having, uh, you know, that kind of coincides and conflicts with what his family's doing uh, and the battle that's being, you know, had within this like political uh, universe uh, in this, uh, you know, in this because it's multiple planets there in space. So definitely really interesting character. But there's also a second pop of Paul Atreides and this one is going to be the Target exclusive formal Paul Atreides. So more towards the beginning there is a little ceremony that he does get, have to get dressed up in. So it's kind of like a war uh, or an army kind of outfit for that ceremony. So kind of that all green army suit with the boots. The boots actually look pretty high in the movie so they maybe didn't uh, tailor that as much but of course he's a smaller figure so you can't quite do that right. But it's just really Timothy Chalamet with his hair slicked back. So nothing too spectacular with this pop. Now Paul is the son of Duke Leto, who is the leader of House Atreides. Duke Leto, played by Oscar Isaac, is definitely a great character. I think Oscar Isaac is one of the better actors we have in Hollywood today. And so this pop really captured like his beard, which just looks super great. He is in that suit as well, which looks awesome, which he does wear for a little bit in the movie mostly when they show up on Arrakis is when he's wearing it but definitely still a cool pop as that full beard and that luscious hair that Oscar Isaac has now in the movie it is a lot more gray so they don't necessarily have that here in the pop there's really not much gray it's not really dark brown in this uh on on the pop but there's really no gray on it so that's a little interesting why they went uh that route uh, but he is also holding the sword and has that suit on just like Paul has. And I think Oscar Isaac definitely gave one of the best performances in the movie. Uh, was definitely an important piece. And I really liked his relationship with Paul. Uh, you know, that father-son dynamic. That was that loving dynamic. Uh, but you did still had a little bit of, of tension about what Paul thought that Duke wanted and what Duke actually wants for his son. Uh, definitely really, really cool. And his kind of outlook on being a leader and it's not just you know forcing people to do something a certain way it's more about how can you you know help everybody reach that potential and what you know is better for the greater good so I definitely think that he was a great great character uh, and definitely one of the best acting performances in the film and Paul's mother Duke Leto's wife is Lady Jessica now, Lady Jessica, played by Rebecca Ferguson, is actually one of the more interesting characters and probably one of the most layered and deep as far as backstory. Uh, so she is, as I said, Paul's mother, but she's actually not only that, she's actually part of the sisterhood of the Benny Jesuit, uh, who are pretty much these uh, group of women who have been in the shadows kind of helping control and push uh, you know, things forward. Uh, throughout the uh, you know, throughout the Republic or I forget what they call it the Imperium I believe was what they they call the kind of uh, conglomerate of all the different planets coming together uh, but she comes from them but she goes over and she creates this family with Duke Leto and has Paul and so with that sort of sisterhood they're looking for you know to create the one and uh, Paul could potentially be the one but she is really, really, uh, you know, afraid about putting her son in that position, you know, feeling bad about what she has done. And then, of course, needing to care for her family and her and her house as well. It's really, really interesting. And the outfit that she has on in this scene is definitely really cool and lots of detail. I would have loved to have this have some sort of like 
glow in the dark uh, feature or something like that on there that definitely would have been cool uh, but she doesn't really do that in the movie so it makes sense but definitely great detail she has sort of those gold beads going down her face and her neck so it's kind of like a mesh cloth that's supposed to cover up her face a little bit she does wear that when they arrive to Arrakis with that beautiful kind of gold dress on definitely uh, looks great now it's interesting because all, all the other Benny Jesuit sisters are wearing like black ones and she's wearing a gold one so that's a little bit interesting that she kind of stands out from there because she does sort of sway from the path and of course house atreides has a big army and that's how they've been able to keep their power in order and one of the top fighters in that army is going to be duncan idaho uh played by jason momoa our aquaman and he is fantastic he was one of my favorites he was badass in the in the movie for sure slaying some some fools um and protecting his house and protecting his brothers and protecting paul and duke and, and lady jessica uh, so it's really cool and you can see here that he does have the outfit on as well uh, as he does spend a lot of time on Arrakis too uh, and the, he definitely has one of the uh, best scenes towards the end of the movie where he does have this little battle uh, well it's kind of a big battle for him so I think he did a really great job in the movie uh, being a great character not too deep uh, but you can definitely tell that he bonded with Paul, he bonded with Duke, he had a great relationship with that family, and he was really willing to do whatever it took to help keep them safe and support them. Same sort of suit on, has a even longer sword. It seems like the sword's getting longer and longer as we go along between Paul, Duke, and Duncan. Uh, he actually has two swords here, so yeah, as he was doing, he was in a couple uh, battles. And the pop definitely looks like Jason Momoa for sure. So they captured his facial features with his beard and his longer hair. Now the villain of the movie kind of is going to be Baron Harkonnen, uh, who is the head of the uh, Harkonnen clan. And he is played by Stellan Skarsgård, which you would not be able to tell from this, right? This kind of big uh, gelatinous uh, lobby guy uh, who was huge. He actually can like levitate. You saw that in the trailer. He kind of floats a little bit which is really really menacing and the way that he speaks this kind of deep groggly voice uh definitely really uh really interesting uh type of design for the character but really really off-putting which i guess works for the villain right that he's super off-putting putting you don't want to root for him and his clan is definitely uh merciless they have um dave bautista i think plays his nephew uh, who is kind of like the lead in the army uh, and he does a pretty decent job uh, I think David Desmalchin from uh, the Suicide Squad and Ant-Man he is also part of that clan as well and has a smaller role uh, but definitely a really really uh, kind of creepy and ominous guy here so he's a bigger guy you can kind of see it actually doesn't it plays a lot more in the movie because his head and his body kind of form into one where he doesn't really have a neck which makes it a little bit more off-putting uh, but you see that he has those kind of pink red circles around his eyes really makes him that menacing kind of figure completely bald a uh, big big guy not my favorite pop and it seems to be this is the least favorite just because people don't want to look at this guy just like you really don't want to look at him in the movie uh, but he's definitely really menacing in the movie uh, he's a terrible person, completely terrible, and he's the one who's kind of trying to orchestrate everything and trying to take out the Atreides clan, uh, and you can kind of see a little bit of it, and Paul talking about his family trying to be picked off, and so this is the guy that's kind of all behind it here, so definitely a terrible, terrible guy. Now, throughout the movie, and we see it in the trailer, Paul continues to have these dreams, and he sees a certain person, a girl in those dreams, on Arrakis. And uh, the person that he sees is Chani, and Chani is played by Zendaya. Uh, now, she doesn't have a huge role in the movie, but she definitely pops up all throughout, but she doesn't really have speaking roles until the end. But she's still an important part of it, uh, and the overall story, because uh, of where she comes from, from the clan that she's with on Arrakis. I don't remember the clan's name. I know it starts with an S. And she is a really important character because of the clan that she is in on Arrakis. 
Uh, they really help kind of make sure that Arrakis isn't going to be taken over by these outsiders like the Harkonnens were. Uh, because the thing about Arrakis is that uh, there's spice there, which is a really, really important uh, material that is able to be used in medicine and clothing and all this stuff. Uh, so it is ravaged. So it's kind of a little bit of a um, environmental tale as well about going to these planets, kind of like Avatar did. Uh, going to this planet and mining it for this for the spice and it kind of ruined uh, You know the experience for the people who live on that planet and so her so her family her people are the one who are trying to defend that and so when she, so Paul keeps seeing her in his dreams doesn't quite know what it's all about eventually Oh, we do meet her uh, But really we're gonna be able to get to know her in the next chapter of this story Johnny also has that same sort of infiltration suit on where that suit actually was actually created by her clan for the people who will roam the desert and you notice the blue eyes which I really really like the blue eyes people in her clan had the blue eyes from that planet because of the spice has chemicals in it and it changed it actually changed over time the colors of their eyes so it actually makes it look super super cool in the movie but there's also going to be a chase of Paul right here but him with the mask on which definitely looks really cool um, overall again I want to go back to give my thoughts on the movie overall I there's definitely some problems that are had with it uh, one I think definitely the length um, the story itself is really, really grand because it does come from the book, which is really, really rich with mythology. But the thing with having such that rich mythology is that it's all brand new and it's all being introduced. So you do have to use a lot of exposition and a lot of dialogue to kind of explain to the viewers what is happening and why things are the certain way, uh, which they actually do a really effective job, especially early on, kind of having us understand the world they're in and building it through that dialogue and exposition like there's even this one scene where you, they're using like a uh, audio book kind of like an audio visual book um, a projection to kind of explain about uh, about the planet that they're going to be going to so I think stuff like that is really effective but it's just not done a lot in certain parts especially on the second half of the movie where a lot of the audience still didn't quite understand myself I still really enjoyed it I think it's still going to be in one of the top you know top of my favorite movies of the year so far uh, just because everything goes into it the acting the cinematography the visual effects I think this movie needs to win at least right now is a favorite to win uh, best visual effects at the Academy Awards because it is hands down the most impressive uh, you know movie visually that I have seen recently I even think it's you know up on the level of something like you know an Avengers Endgame and Infinity War probably even better as far as the visuals are concerned with how they're able to blend the physical sets with the CGI sets I think that was so so impressive there is some pretty good action in there not a ton of action so if you're expecting to go in and see like a Venom Let There Be Carnage where there's this all but a bunch of this action or a Marvel movie you're not going to get that you're going to get a lot of backstory you're going to get a lot of tension it's going to be about family it's going to be about like i said his coming paul's coming of age it's going to be about politics it's going to be about war it's going to be about greed uh it's going to be about environmentalism it's going to be about how do you come together and find common ground with those who you do not you know have that much in common with uh, at least in the start so how do we all kind of come together which is a great message in today's world you know where they're all different sides kind of pulling against each other right so there's a lot of great themes and a lot of great ideas before this movie it's not a hundred percent it doesn't it doesn't hit a hundred percent you can really really see a lot of it come to its front I really do enjoy it again I recommend it and if you're gonna see it go see it in a theater please I know it's on HBO Max I know of course some of you guys might not have a theater near you or maybe you're in a place where it's not necessarily as easy especially internationally to be able to see this movie but if you can if you have the choice between watching it HBO Max and watching it in a theater please go watching it in a theater you know watch it in a 40x or a Dolby or an IMAX theater because it's really going to give you that full experience uh, and you're really going to be able to see the visuals because I know for me watching it on my you know 56 inch TV downstairs it's not going to give me the full experience versus watching on the IMAX theater that I did yesterday. So I still recommend going to see it. Uh, you know, I'd really be interested to hear what you guys think of this movie. 
do you guys love it did you like it or are you more like me did you hate it uh, I definitely have heard some different people saying a bunch of different things online from last night uh, but let me know how you watched it what your thoughts were of it in the comments down below also let me know what you think of these Funko Pops uh, which one are your favorite I would have to say Paul is definitely my favorite out of all of these I do really like uh, Duncan Idaho as well but Paul this Paul trade is definitely my favorite out of all of them but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and of course if you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button go ahead and leave a like in the video it really does help us out and I very much appreciate it but thank you guys so much for watching today and as always we'll see you again real soon